My name is Reed Bailey. Welcome to the Intuitive Statistics videos on frequency dependent variables. Here in part one, we focused on tests of proportions. Like all these videos in the Intuitive Statistics series, we assume you already know the basics about the statistical tests, and you're really here to learn more about when to use them and what do their results mean. We have a statistical test selection guide for single factor statistics available at the URL shown. And today and in the next video on chi-square videos in part two, we're focused down here on frequency dependent variables. Now, probably the hardest part with test of proportions is knowing when to use them. And once you know that, the rest is pretty straightforward. Well, there are two basic tests. There was a one sample test of proportion where you're answering, are the percentage that have X property different than a target percentage. And there's also a two sample one where you're comparing two different groups. Are the percentage that have X, the certain property, the same for the two groups? Like we said, some of the hardest parts is knowing when to use a test of proportions. And we're gonna give you two ways to kind of identify it. The first being the nature of the question. That you're trying to answer. Here are a whole bunch of examples to get, let you see kind of how it can look. For a one sample test of proportions, the question could be, is the percentage of women in engineering at state university equal to a target value? And you would set that target value and compare the actual percentage to the target value. How about in manufacturing? Is the proportion of rejected parts less than 5%? Or in aviation, do at least a third of all plane crashes occur in bad weather? So what you can see here is in each case, you're taking the data and the actual proportion of something occurring in that data and comparing it to a target value with a one sample test of proportion. Two sample tests of proportions, very similar. You're just comparing the proportions between two groups, two independent groups in your data. So if we looked at all car crashes and we labeled them as either caused by drunk driving or not, and then we also knew uh, the driver, the gender of the driver, is the proportion of total crashes caused by drunk driving equal for men and women? You could check that with a two sample test of proportion. How about for a call center where you're trying to reach people, reach particular people? Is the percentage of calls that connect with the right party, the person you're trying to call, the same on weekdays as it is on weekends? And finally, as an example, was the percent of Android users who turned on a new feature the same as the percent of iOS users. And this last question is the one we're going to actually use as an example throughout today. Now, another way to recognize a test of proportions, which otherwise might be hiding, is the data itself. And the data can show up in lots of different ways. One way the data could be shown is as raw data. On our left here, we have 100 randomly selected Android users and a one means they turned on this feature, a zero means they didn't turn it on. And on the right column, we have 100 randomly selected iOS users. Again, a one means they turned on the feature and a zero means they didn't turn it on. Now, in some ways it looks like you could run an independent samples t-test here. And in fact, you could put it in a stat package and it would run an independent samples t-test. But why is that not appropriate? Well, think about what the one and zero really mean. It just means I turned it on or I didn't turn it on. We happened to assign a one and a zero to it. It's really just two different categories. Averaging those two things makes no sense. It's averaging a categorical concept. Binary variables, you don't wanna be taking averages. And a t-test does take averages and make standard deviations around the data that you put into it. So here you would run a test of proportions on the raw binary data. 
You could also see the data set up this way as a summarized data table. So now we have our Android users. We see that 31 out of 100 of them turned on the feature. And for our iOS users, 22 out of 100 turned on this new feature. This looks a lot like we're gonna see for a chi-square table. And for tests of proportions, you would identify your time to use them because the table is only a two by two table or could be a one by two table if it's a one sample test. And a third way the data could show up is just the proportion and your sample size. So 31% versus 22%, and we know N is equal to 100. Each of these three slides is identical in terms of the information. It's just presented in different ways. And in each case, you can run a test of proportions. Now, I want to point something out here. You have your proportion, P, and you have your N. And there's an analogy I like to make, which is if you know t-test really well, your proportion is really setting sort of your central value, kind of like the mean does in a t-test. Well, let's see what that looks like graphically. We can see our iOS and our Android proportions each having their central value on this chart. Well, they each also have a spread of uncertainty around that central value. So let's take, for instance, just one of these two. Let's actually go ahead and say you know, 0.2 for this example is going to be what our P equals, our proportion. How do we know what the spread is? Well, you already know the only extra thing we know about the data is the sample size. So you're probably thinking it's related to that. And if you are, you're right. How is it related? Well, it's through looking at the binomial distribution. And we know that the confidence interval for the binomial distribution around a proportion is plus or minus Z times the standard deviation. For a 95% confidence interval, Z would be set to 1.96. And the other value in this equation, the standard deviation right there, the equation for it is right here. And it contains two variables in it, the proportion itself and the sample size. And so the spread is dependent on both the proportion itself and the sample size. <clears throat> this would be an example of the spread of the proportion if n were equal to 100, around 20%, around 0.2. If n equal 10, it's a lot wider. n equal to 1,000, it's a lot narrower. So the more sample you have, the narrower your um, confidence interval will get, so the spread of your data gets around the, um, the mean value for it or the proportion itself. Just for a moment, I mean, this looks an awful lot like independent samples t-test now. You're comparing two central values, dividing it by the spread of those values. The actual equation here, this is the non-pooled estimate example of the equation um, is shown below, and what results is a z-score. Instead of a t-statistic, you get a z-statistic, and that's how ultimately you determine whether this is a statistically significant difference. All right, now we're going to do this in Minitab. And the example we're going to use is this Android versus iOS users, where we had 100 people that we randomly offered this new feature to uh, that were Android users, and we had 100 people that we randomly offered this new feature to that were iOS users. And we wanted to see if the proportions that turned it on were the same. The data is available at the URL shown below. And let's go on over to Minitab and I'll show you how to run this. All right, so here we are in Minitab. I got the data over. We have 100 random users that had Android operating system, 100 random users that had iOS. And for each one, we're seeing if they turn on a certain feature. To run the two sample tests, the proportions will come to stat, basic statistics, and then two proportions. And you can either have your data set up to so one column would say Android or iOS, and the other says zero or one. In our case, we have our data where each sample is in its own column. And so column one is sample one, column two, sample two. We have options if we want to do things like a one-tailed test, but we don't want to. We're doing a two-tailed test here. Hit go. 
it tells us that we have 31% uh, of Android users turned on the feature and 22% of iOS users did. Down here where we look at the actual test results, our Z value is 1.45. So our P value is 0.147. If 0.05 is the number we're looking for, that would not be significant. So even though 31% of Android users turned on the feature, 22% of iOS users did, it's not statistically significant at the 0.05 level. All right, so we just ran the two sample proportions test in Minitab. Now we're gonna show you how to do a one sample one. You could imagine the question being this, did more than 25% of Android users turn on this feature? Let's go back to Minitab and I'll show you how to run that test. All right, now we're back here in Minitab to run our one sample test of proportions to see if more than 25% of Android users turned on this feature. Same menu, stat, basic statistics, but now we'll go to our one proportion. In this case, our data is in column one. We are gonna perform a hypothesis test with the hypothesized proportion being 0.25. And now we are gonna do a one-tailed test. Under options, we're gonna say our, our um, alternative hypothesis is that our proportion is less than the hypothesized proportion. No, it's our, that our proportion is greater than the hypothesized proportion. Hit okay, hit okay. And our results come that our p-value is a 0.104, so still not significant at the 0.05 level. Uh, but you could say with almost 90% confidence that the true proportion of Android users is greater than 25%. You just couldn't say it at the 95% level. Now, after running these two tests with any single factor hypothesis test, you need to make sure the assumptions are being met. The key one with test of proportions is that you have at least five or more observations um, in each of either not doing something or doing something. So in our summarized table here, we need to see five or more in each of these, and we do in this case, so we're good. And also the data are independent. Assuming the order that we have it in the data as we gave it to you is the order it was collected. Here's what those two uh, plots would look like um, for iOS on the left, Android on the right. And it's all over the place, turning up, not happening. If it were some big trend here where we saw a lot of people turning it on towards the end and not very many at the start, then we might be concerned about another factor maybe happening right in the middle of our data collection that actually is very influential. So our data wouldn't be independent at that point. All right, so when should you use a test of proportions? Well, you now know, start with a question. It's frequently gonna say something like, what's the percentage of time something happens or the proportions of it? But more than that, you also need to look at the data. Clearly you've got a binary dependent variable, yes or no, it has this property or it doesn't have this property. But also that summary table needs to be one by two or a two by two in order for a one sample or two sample test of proportions to work. If you've got a bigger summary table, that's when you need to go to chi-square, which we cover in our next video.